Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome to another edition of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick, joined, as always, for our English-speaking audience with Big Show. What's going on, man? What's going on? How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm a little tongue-twisted today because uh, a lot to talk about in the NFL world. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But before we get to that, man, I gotta get I gotta get your input on this upcoming Mike Tyson, Jake Paul fight. Um, I want to know first, who do you think is going to win? And do you even think it'll be much of a fight? Oh, it took him um, too long. To <laughs> well, you say too much of a fight. That's. First of all, I need to know if all these hype videos and things that I'm seeing are real or if it's just to sell the product. Mm. Because there are some, uh, I guess, and I don't know if this is true, but I guess Jake Paul was on Tyson's podcast, and that's how the challenge got thrown down. I believe. Uh, so. I don't know if I don't know if this is actually true, but they had a heated discussion before they were like. Tice was like, well, fuck you, then. Why don't you fight me, type of thing. Ooh. And they kind of got, he and, and Logan Paul basically said, dude, you're you're old. I, you know, I, I'm not afraid of you, blah, 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 blah. Jake Paul, you know, Jake Paul, that. you said Logan, not the brother. I the thought little, it was, oh, I, it's Jake. I thought it was Logan Paul. No, the anyway, little, bro, the little brother. Logan get, Paul's a dude in wrestling, right? He wrestles. I think they both do, but. He's the little brother. He'll get killed. Well, they're both get, would get destroyed. They could, they could, they could fight Tyson at the same time. He'd still whoop him. But anywho, so Jake Paul uh, said, "You basically said he wasn't afraid of him." Blah blah blah. Define much of a fight. I mean, Tyson is a wrecking ball. And I seen this meme the other day. An old wrecking ball doesn't stop being a wrecking ball. It's a wrecking ball, period. True. True. Um, depending on how serious the words were exchanged, um, is going to be whether it's going to be a good fight or not. But yeah, Tyson's going to destroy that cat. I mean, Jake Paul's going to fuck around and find out. That's that's what I'm hoping for too. I mean, you've only got three outcomes in this fight. Tyson destroys him. Jake gets the miracle win in a very lackluster fight, or it's a lackluster fight and it doesn't really matter who wins because nobody really won or lost because it sucked that much. Th those are your three outcomes. Well, the nice thing is, is that it's on Netflix. So you don't have to pay extra to see it. If you're a Netflix subscriber. Let me see who I can steal their password from this, that weekend. I'll help you out. Just let me know. <laughs> uh, Netflix will be calling us both. <laughs> man, who cares? What's the worst thing I can do? Cancel my subscription? No, okay. I'll just give it to somebody else. Um, But. And are they going to be the only ones on the card? Is it just that fight? Yeah, that, how many rounds I, is I it? I do not know. Are they going to fight blindfolded? What are they going to do to actually sell the thing? Like, is it just them? I mean, I don't know. But if it's a straight up fight, Tyson will destroy him. Tyson hasn't stopped training, even though he's retired. Right? Have you seen videos of him, you know? With oh, yeah. Current? Man. Oh, yeah. He That dude is, he's still jacked. He's still got the moves. I, I mean, I wouldn't do it. I mean, he's a... He's he's just a wrecking ball. I mean, this is just plain and simple. You, you, you just... It's like... It'd be like if Bruce Lee... Or, oh, no. Bad habit. You know, he... Cause he it'd be like going up right now and saying, Hey, Chuck Norris, let's fight. 
I wish hey, you would. hey, uh, Michael Ja White, let's 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 fight. I challenge you. You know that it no. Yeah, and, and no. I think, I think that's the uh, thing. You know, there's always it happens in the human population and the animal world. There's always that young stud that wants to challenge the silverback. What do yeah, you think and happen? there is act. You know, for Jake Paul, he's in a lose lose situation. Yeah. If if he if he fights Tyson, Tyson destroys him. That's that's your loss. If you happen to dominate Tyson and beat him, dude, you beat up an old man. Big whoop. You know what I mean? Tyson has nothing to lose in this. Except maybe a little bit of fear factor if Paul was able to do anything. And now, any given fight, a person can land a good shot. I just don't see Jake Paul being able to withstand the barrage, the strength, the fury, the tenacity of Tyson. Even the chill Tyson that we have now. Because this isn't the mani the maniacal Tyson from when we was younger and kid, you know. This is a more seasoned, and I don't know about you, but he, that old man strength ain't, ain't no joke. No, it ain't. I, I mean, so he See, knows what better. Tyson has going for him. He's yeah, Tyson's wiser. Tyson is wiser. He's more, you know, he's more seasoned. It's, it's not going to be pretty for Paul. And what happens if he still has that killer instinct too? You unleash the beast. Oh, he has. You you don't lose that. You you don't lose the killer instinct. You just tame it. You put it to sleep. You you put it on a leash. You know, to where if you ever needed it. It's still there. You just don't, you're just not that walking killer instinct like he was, you know, back in the day. Th that that guy is still there. Now, July 20th, he'll be here before we know it. I know it seems like it's a long ways away, but that's plenty of time for both parties to be in somewhat good shape. I've seen the way Tyson, you know, like we said, uh, he still spars, he still gets in the ring. He still looks good, so... I have, I have no no illusion saying that he won't be in shape. He'll be ready. How old is Tyson? 57. Okay. Jake is 50, 27. There's a 30-year right. gap. So, Sensei Brown, he's been on our show, my instructor, mm -hmm. is in his middle 50s. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've known Sensei Brown... I've been in martial arts for damn near 30 years. Uh, so right around that time, I've known him for that. So I've known him when he was a young man to where he is now. He is more dangerous now than he was back then. And that's kind of how I see Tyson, you know. Uh, and, and let me take it up to another level. Everybody forgets because it's been, you know, 15, 20 years. Remember George Foreman? Everybody laughed. Why is mm. this old dude getting back in the ring? And he was pounding dudes. He was, but he wasn't fighting anybody either. Th that's until he fought. Uh, wh who, who was the guy um, that was in the Rocky movie? Tommy Morrison. Was that it? Yeah. That was his Tom only. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. You're good. I was going to say that was his only true competition but you know I think the first few people he fought they were respecting him and it seemed like that they were trying not to hit on the old man but once people realize this dude is still for real and he's still got a hell of a, a jab and and let's put it this way too he was not in the best of shape himself Oh, no. He no. was not in Mike Tyson shape. We can agree on that, right? Oh, yeah. And even if you look at Tyson two weeks ago, Tyson's not in shape. I mean, he's in shape. He's better. He's probably more in shape than you and I are. But he's not 
he's not in fighting form shape. No, he's in, he's in the process of getting there. So he'll he, be there. He by had, July. He'll oh be yeah, there. he has all that muscle memory, and you know his body's going to remember what it was like to to train for a fight. You know, uh, if this fight lasts longer than three or four rounds, I'll be completely completely surprised. Yeah. Okay. A funny thing happened on the way to our uh, TVs and radios and phones and internet yesterday. NFL free agency broke out. So some crazy things happened, and I want to go over all the teams. But there are four types of teams when it comes to NFL free agency. The good teams that stay good. The good teams that go down a notch. The bad teams that get a little bit better. Or the bad teams that stay bad. You're in one the of those four chasers. categories. Yeah, you're in yes. one of those four categories. So just going down the list of these teams. Arizona Cardinals. Uh, well, before we start, hold on, before we start. Yeah. What I find is completely craziness to me is we have all of this news of who's going where, signing what, blah, 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 blah. Free agency doesn't really start till tomorrow at three o'clock our time in the afternoon. The official free agency does not start till tomorrow. That's right, the 13th. <laughs> so for and everybody all of watching this, this action, we're filming this on Tuesday, the 12th. Right. But free agency isn't until the 13th. So technically nothing's signed yet. Well, there's a few like Chris Jones is signed, you know, well, all those that, guys that were on the same team that resigned. Yeah. Yes. An agreement in principle. But, yeah. Yeah. But go ahead. So we said Cardinals. Yeah. I'm, I'm just going to throw out all these names for each team. And you tell me if you think that they are better, worse, same. Cardinals, they got uh, defensive tackle Justin Jones, cornerback Sean Murphy Bunning, linebacker Mac Wilson. Uh, o, o line, uh, Tristan Colon, and running back DJ Dallas. Um, what are my options? Same, better, or worse? Worse. Well, I thought there were four. Well, you've got your good ones that are staying good. Then you got the good ones that are getting better, the good ones that get worse, or the bad ones that, uh, either stay the same or get worse um obviously these these teams that i don't necessarily follow as closely as some others yeah i'm not really going to have a good feel on I, I i like that cornerback signing of sean murphy bunting i think that'll be a uh help on the secondary because i know they have uh buddha baker as their safety um so that's going to help uh, but I mean, I'd say they're probably going to be remain about the same. Yeah. Now, the rest of the way out, I'm probably going to skip a lot of the uh, middle of the road players. I want to talk about the heavy hitters. So as we get to the Atlanta Falcons, you know which name sticks out: Kirk Cousins, four years, one hundred eighty million dollars. Uh, Kirk robbed a bank. That's all I'm going to say about that. This is the second time, third time. Third time that he hit the jackpot. He needs more gold the, chains. The the free agency uh, lottery, so to speak. Kirk Cousins needs more gold chains. Yeah, I actually like so far. I mean, they've only signed three people. Oh, well, signed two, re-signed one of their own. Uh, but that Darnell Moody wide receiver from from the Bears. I was kind of hoping the Chiefs would make a run for him. But I think that's a good signing for for them. I mean, they've already got a running back. They've already got a tight end. So, I mean, yeah, I well, think they, that's... they signed uh, Charlie uh, Warner, the tight end. He's three years, $12 million, so... Yeah, but they've, they've got that, that, that star tight end, Pitts, Kyle Pitts. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, that he's just going to be a backup guy. So, I mean, they've already got... Pieces in place. I would say the Falcons got a little better because their division sucks. That is true. 
Let's see here. Baltimore Ravens. All right, talk to me, brother. They got they... Derek Henry. Two years, 16 mil. Eight mil a season. Um, Do you think this makes the Ravens less dangerous, more dangerous? What? Um, I I, I want to say at, when it comes to the Dane, I think they definitely got better. I mean, they they improved their running back situation. They improved their defensive line situation because they signed Justin Matabuke or re-signed him. Um, I I do think they got a little better. However, now dangerous wise, dangerous to who? To the AFC, we'll not necessarily. Just, we'll just stick with their division right now because you know there's there's a lot of football that's going to be played, a lot of stuff that's going to be decided. Uh, I would say they get probably... back into rehashing the who's going to what championship just yet. Yeah, I, I think they they probably got a tick better on paper, per se. Yeah. Um, I I really. If I was if I was a true Derrick Henry fan, I would be disappointed that the Ravens is where I, he chose to go because, uh, you know Jackson's going to take his carries and yards from him versus going to a team such as like I said in our text Dallas, yeah. uh, which would have been a better place for him, uh, better fit in my humble opinion, but I'd say tick better. The Buffalo Bills. I'm shaking my head at this one. They got an edge rusher in AJ Espinosa. They got uh, defensive tackle Daquan Jones, and then they got quarterback Mitch Trubisky. Don't ask me why. He's back up to Josh. He was already there. He's been there before. He just came back. Yeah, but this is a team that I don't see got any better in free agency so far. No, I mean, and and you got to say that they're probably a tick down because of all the players that they released, you know, on defense. Um, I mean, Espinosa is—he's just a re-sign. He was—he's already played there last year. Um, I was hoping that 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 Deion Dawkins, when he did that tweet yesterday, was actually going to be released, but uh, he got he got. Uh, Resigned. Daquan Jones was on their team last year. Just kind of looking at their stuff. Um, they're they're remaining neutral. They they didn't get better or worse. I I don't think necessarily yet. Talk to me about the Carolina Panthers. They got uh, uh, guard uh, Robert Hunt and Damian Lewis. Is that supposed to – who's Damian Lewis? I'm trying to figure out who Robert Hunt is, too. Oh, well, you said – the way you said it was like, oh, my God. Uh, nah, I was know, being I, very sarcastic. Looks like – I mean, just by looking at the money, they they just paid $153 million for two offensive linemen. But uh, why? They well, because they – they, they need the help. Overpaid. Well, I don't know. I'd have to actually do some research on these guys to actually know who they played for and you know where they were in the status. So Robert Hunt played for the Dolphins last year. Uh, where'd he go? And then Damian Lewis played for Seattle. Nothing, nothing strikes strikes me as big whoop. The uh, Chicago Bears got uh, cornerback Jalen Johnson and running back DeAndre Swift. I on paper they got better, uh, because they got safety Kevin Bayard. They signed the Chargers tight end Gerald Everett. DeAndre Swift, I wanted the Chiefs to draft out of college. I would say they got better. It's really going to depend on what they do with Fields. Yeah. 
the Cincinnati Bengals, who had a down year last year, they re-signed T. Higgins, uh, safety Geno Stone, no. running they back Zach re- Moss. Huh? They haven't re-signed Higgins. He's oh. he's on the he's on the franchise tag, but he's asked to be traded. Okay, that, so, yeah, yeah. I don't know why I said why I said resign. It just says one year, twenty one million. So yeah, that is the franchise tag money. But he has requested a uh, trade, so I would be surprised. He's not going to be on the Bengals team next year. He'll be dealt by or on draft day. Mm. Um, I want to say I want to say that they got worse. Uh, because they traded uh their running back Mixon, um, and they just signed Zach Moss. So I want to say they got a little worse. I can see that. Cleveland, they uh looks like are in well. I won't say neutral. I'm gonna see what you say. Uh, obviously they're trying. They're in talks with Jameis Winston to you know. See what's going to go, going to happen there. Uh, the ex saint now, edge rusher Zadarius Smith. That's a good sign. You got you got to have Zadarius Smith. He's a beast. And then Jordan Hicks, two years, eight million. And then don't forget they traded for Jerry Judy at wide receiver. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. Cleveland to me is better. Uh, yeah. I mean, I would say they got a little better. I mean. Yeah, they got a little better. Dallas, them Cowboys. They didn't do shit, did they? That, that's why I said it like that. I have nothing to report. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Jerry Jones, what are you doing? And well, they- you know what? This is where Jerry Jones is smart, though. He doesn't overpay. And Before most... Back. and. And and most of these guys, most of these teams that are making these big uh, splashes are the teams that kind of suck, you know, and they're not really going to chase anything, so they're overpaying. Um, so it's it's not new to me that it doesn't. I mean, it's no news to me that they haven't done anything special. I'm surprised they didn't do the, anything on Derrick Henry though. That would have been a good fit. It would have. Not that it's not a good fit in Baltimore, but like you said earlier in our chat, it probably would have been a better fit in Dallas. Yeah. Now the Denver Broncos got fullback Mike Burton and defensive tackle uh, Malcolm Roach. Mike oh, Burton. Let's of... not forget they released Russell Wilson. And traded their wide receiver, Jerry Judy. Yeah. Um, I don't think Denver wants any part of the AFC West at this point from what I'm seeing. Yeah. I, I'm going to say they got worse. I feel the same I mean, way. they obviously they obviously are going to get worse. They're going to pay Russell Wilson still damn near $40 million to go play for another team. Yeah. And, and, and it, yeah, I'm, I'm not even saying that. No. Yeah. Next, <laughs> Detroit Lions. Uh, they got guard uh, Graham uh, Glasgow and cornerback Amik Robertson, who is the former Raider. I think they needed some help mm. in their secondary. That's what let them down in the uh, – where, where are you getting your free agency signings? Because when I look at them, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven signings, and you I, I only said two. I don't have a list in. I'm probably behind. Oh, um, see, just go I to see. if you just go to NFL.com and do the, the free agency tracker, it's broke down by each team and all the players that they got. Well, let me switch up then because I'm on CBS. Um because they they got it looks like they Graham Glasgow, like you said, uh Demarcus Davin or Marcus Davenport, Jalen Reeves, Mabin, who's a linebacker, Carlton Davis, who's acquired from the Bucks. Emmanuel Mosley as a corner. Amik Robinson is the guy you said, and then they signed kicker Michael Bagley. Um, I don't really know enough about these guys. I would say Detroit's probably going to – I would say 
excuse me, staying neutral, you know, they're still going to be competitive. Um, Amik Robertson, because I'm I'm a Raider fan, I can tell you that he he's a good player uh, in the secondary. His knock is staying healthy. And, you know, that worried me. So now that's that's somebody else's problem. Got gotcha. you. Bear with me here. I'm trying to. Get no, the you're old, good. The old PC to catch up because now we're. Uh, we're looking at the. Green Bay Packers. The Green Bay Packeroonies. I'm not going to mention the name that hurt me, but you know, Josh Jacobs. I'm, I'm sure that I'm, I'm, I'm sure that hurt because um, he and deserves as a player. It. Go ahead. He he went through hell with those two years with um, the other Josh, Josh McDaniels. So he he deserves to get his money. Yeah, and and but talk about a player that's going to two entirely extremes when it comes to cities, <laughs> Las Vegas and then Green Bay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, I would say that I'm going to say that they basically stayed the same because losing Aaron uh, Aaron Jones and then re-signing Josh Jacobs to me is a wash. Yeah, yeah. So you didn't really get better. You didn't really get worse. Um, but I, I would probably say, I mean, because none of these players on here besides Jacobs, you know, wets my whistle because I don't really know a whole lot about them. But I'd say they're about the same. Let's let's skip a few. I want to go talk about the Kansas City Chiefs. Okay. Because this is a prime example of you're good. And you're staying good. Um, obviously, Chris Jones, five years, one hundred sixty million. Legarius Sneed, is that the franchise tag? That nineteen point yes. eight. Okay. Yes. And then Drew Tranquil, three years, nineteen million. Yes. You like those? You like those signings? Yes, and then we also signed tight end Irv Smith Jr. today. To a one-year deal. Uh, he played for the Bengals last year. Was drafted by the Vikings. Um, and then we also signed the Bills punter a few weeks ago. Matt Araza to replace uh, Tommy Townsend who left. Um, Drew Tranquil is going gonna, is, is gonna to replace Willie Gay who we're not re-signing. Yeah. Um. Legarius Sneed will not be on this team next year. He won't. He'll end up being traded. Mm. Um, I, I don't see. I, I could be wrong unless they're able. But okay, so let's go to the Chris Jones thing. That it's that's a big deal. I mean, he's now he's. I think he's a hundred thousand more than what. Uh, uh, what's his name over at the Rams? Uh, tackle um, 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 Donald Donald yeah Aaron Donald thank you Aaron Donald uh he's just slightly he's a tick above what his contract was so now Chris Jones is the highest paid ever defensive tackle in the NFL on paper here's the thing and and this is my favorite time of year because it, it tickles my managerial uh figuring out kind of stuff brain and but Chris Jones signed the five year deal, but there is an out clause by the Chiefs after year three. Hmm. So technically, Chris Jones will only really be here for the next three years. Uh he's he guaranteed he's he's gonna have about a hundred million dollars in guarantees over this contract. So that out clause is for both sides, then. Yeah, so okay. so even though that says five year fifty eight point seven five million dollars, it's actually three years one hundred and one million dollars. 
he's not ever going to see that last 58. I could be wrong, but and I that it'll get restructured type of thing. Kind of like right now the Chiefs are 5 million over the cap. That that's why I say they're they're going something's got to change with Snead. Okay? So yeah. so before we can sign Herb Smith Jr. even though he's already, you know, basically going to sign with us. Here are the things that are going to happen before the deadline tomorrow. Patrick Mahomes will restructure. Uh, and Joe Tooney will restructure. That'll give us between 25 and 30 million under the cap. This is where the Chiefs are really good. Okay. Now, before I get to my team, I want to talk about this restructure. I want you to, you know, give us a little bit more insight on it. Okay. Does that mean to the layman like me, oh, if Patrick Mahomes restructures, they'll defer money until this year, the next year, the next year. How does that work with the cap in the future? And what what kind of bearing does it have? Like towards next year or the year after? Because eventually you think, hey, you got to pay these guys. So <clears throat> NFL is the only sport that has a, has a salary cap, right? Right. But in technicality, they do not have a salary cap because everything can be finagled, pushed, moved around. So what I kind of liken it to is your home budget, okay? Mm -hmm. You and your wife. You guys are sitting down and you planning on a trip to Aruba and it costs X amount of dollars, okay? You know today you cannot write that check. But you right. know, but you are going to plan that in August you're going to go for a week. You're going to figure out the money on how to pay for that trip by the time you leave, right? Right. That's kind of how the salary cap is. So what they're going to do is take the money that's on paper and they're going to say, yo, Clark, write Patrick a check for $20 million. That's money that's not really against the cap. It is and it's not because it's physical money. It's, it's I'm paying this as a bonus versus $35 million being spread over X amount of years against the cap. Does that make sense? It makes sense to me. I mean, so that's how they're, that's how they do it. And they end up restructuring Patrick's deal every single year. Patrick allows them to adjust his stuff because he knows that he's going to get a lump sum versus drug out over the 10 well, years. And, that and he's I guess that's for. my big question. Is he in danger of not getting his full contract because of the restructuring? Um, Will he ever see that whole half a billion dollars? Probably not from the Chiefs, but I guarantee you he's already made half a billion dollars in all his incentives and all that stuff that he's done for, for being as successful as he as he has been. Because if you look, he set the market three years ago when he resigned. Right now, he, he's salary wise, he's in the middle of, of the tiers. And quarterbacks such as Kirk Cousins. And those guys are above him salary-wise per year, but not in talent-wise and success. Yeah. Okay. So with that restructuring that's going to happen, it gives them availability to do stuff, you know, here in the next couple of days. But let's get to your team because I'm looking at our clock. I didn't realize we're yeah, almost we're up done. against it. I mean, my team is pretty basic. Uh, Christian Wilkins, Gardner Minshew, Andre James, just to name a few. Um, these are all middle of the road to me. I mean, we've had James, so we know what we're getting with him. Christian Wilkins is a beast against everybody except for Kansas City. Go figure. And uh, Gardner Minshew is a stopgap. He really is. They're going to draft a mobile quarterback, and they're going to, or they're going to, you know, have him push uh, the quarterback we have. To, to make some noise. Where, where do you guys draft? What's your draft position? 13. Unless we move up some kind of way. So theoretically, you have a shot to get one of the top five quarterbacks that are going to be on there. Theoretically. There will be Jaden Daniels, but I don't think he'll be there at 13. Why would they? 
I would. He's the one that came off the surgery, right? At LSU, or no, Florida State? No, no, Jaden Daniels. God, what? See, I have to think about that. I mean, I think LSU. I tell you what, we're up against it, but we we got a lot more free agency, so we will talk more free agency in a future episode. All right, uh, I think Wilkins is a great signing for you guys. I, I really do. I think that's your defensive line will be a beast till he plays Kansas City. Then he's a no show. We'll, we need to worry about that. Well, I mean, but you'll still win 15 games. How's that? <laughs> Take us on out of here. Hey, thanks for thanks for uh, coming in to our house and, and listen to us babble. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. See you next week. Love each other. Later.